Hello, I'm Mertz Wannabes. This is Orlando from Wishcasting. Today I'm with Alice and she's from Business Class Emirates. We have tons of questions by the Emirates Wannabes. The Emirates Wannabes is a Facebook group. Uh, if you don't know anything about it, check in the description. There's a link there. You can join, ask your questions. There's a lot of resources under the file section. There's CV templates. There's everything you can think of of Emirates and how to join and all that. Plus, there's Emirates cabin crew. For example, Alice is in the group that are directly uh, answering your questions. And so I don't think there's any other resource better than them to answer your questions. And they directly answer your questions. They don't just talk about something and then you have to gather your conclusions out of it. Alice, how long have you been in business class and also economy? Okay, so I've been in Emirates total six years, so two in economy and four in business class. We can definitely say that she has quite a good experience in Emirates. And may I ask you, where are you from? I'm from Italy and from a small village next to Venice. Behind us, the Charles Bridge, and on the other side is Malastrana. And it's very hard to do this video because there's constantly people coming uh, to this side and like they could stop here. It is just like another meter this side and there's nothing here, the same view, but they have to come in front of the camera. They like us. Yeah, I, I guess they really <laughs> love us or something. Anyways, we gotta get this done quickly because uh, doing this video is like so tough. Anyways, uh, the first question, for today is um, what are the challenges in working in business class? So what can you tell us about it? I think the bigger challenge is expectation that the passenger have towards us, towards the flight itself, towards the service, towards the products that we have, because they fly a lot. So they know what we have and what we can do. So we need to respect the standards of the company and respect their expectations as well, which they're almost working together, by the way. So we need to know the products because they will ask for it. And we need to give the right answer, like the name of the wines. Yeah, you have to be perfect. Oh, can I have that French wine? And you need to know which one is the French wine, yeah. which they have such a complicated name, by the way. Chateau. <laughs> Les Chateaux Jean I have no idea what I just said, but. Well, Chateau is castle. That's yeah, it. That's, that's the only that's thing I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they practically paid four times the amount that an economy passenger paid, so they at least want double the service quality, or, well, four times the service quality. So you have to be up to their expectations on being four times the price of an economy ticket. That's what I think. The next question was uh, posted by Alexandre Bonetto. By the way, the one before was uh, posted by Megali Pimentel. Thank you for posting the question. This question is by Alexandre Bonetto, and it's how long does it typically take to go from economy to business and then from business to first? That's a tough question because it depends on the, on the company, on the company needs. So for example, when I joined, I've been in uh, economy two years, which was quite long, but not as bad as it is now. Uh, now it's a bit longer. Uh, so roughly the figures can you give us the figures four four years three four years to go to econo in to go economy. From economy yeah from economy to business class and then from business class to first class actually that I know for sure because I just met my manager and she told me that now they are looking on an average of four years and a half in business class to go to first class it was two years and two years before, or two years and one year before. And you could even skip, skip. first class and go to a uh, senior supervisor. And then from senior supervisor, I think two years, three years, to purser. Now, that's just inexistent. It's impossible. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the third question. Is EK going to continue or stop recruiting at the end of this year? Posted by Mohammed. Tohami. Okay, sorry Mohammed, but I don't have this answer. Uh, we are the last ones to know these things, so I cannot really tell you, but I guess they will keep recruiting because the, the expo is coming. So 2020, the expo is coming to Dubai, so it will be a big thing. Probably they will add some flights. Don't take everything like for sure, but that's what I think, what I suppose, because they are doing a very big work behind this expo. So now, for example, we need to wear a new badge for 
So on our jackets, we have the name, our name, and the star. Now we need to add a new badge from the expo. Then we have a new tag for the cabin bag and a new tag for the luggage as well for the expo. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. So there's a big work around the expo. So I guess they will probably add some flights or destinations. So they will probably keep recruiting people. Also, don't forget, there's a lot of people that are resigning, mainly economy crew. They're always resigning. They stay for two, three years. Sometimes some, someone stays for six months and resigns. And so, less. yeah, even less. Some people even finish their training. They really hate the first flight, second flight. They don't like how they get bossed around or how tough it is because it really is tough. And then they resign. So they need to constantly transplant these people that leave right away and sort of are kind of uh, unreliable and they have to hire other people that know they'll stay. And also another thing I want to add is the fact that every year that passes and every contract that she signs, it's extra money on top of the basic salary that she used to get. So she used to get uh, X amount of money with her basic salary and now she gets X plus 500 dirhams per month because she's been for six years in the company. Put on top of that that she's business class, she makes more money because in business class you make more money. So she's sort of like a, a pain in the butt I'm for expensive. the company. She's expensive because she gets paid more. And if they hire economy class that only have like their first contract, they get paid less so it's better for the company. So they will always hire people and they'll always find, I hope not, but they'll always find some excuse to, to get new people and to fire other people if they've done something really, really bad or maybe less bad because nowadays the, the sort of threshold in doing bad things is very low. Like you do something stupid, it, you get a warning right away. So it's easier to get fired, it's really easy to hire and so they're never going to stop hiring. That's what I think. Maybe they'll put everything on hold if they reach the maximum compa capacity of cabin crew that they have. Uh, but then people will keep on resigning and they'll need to fill in the gaps because those flights still have to go from point A to point B and from B to C. So uh, if you don't have the crew, you can't operate the flight. If you can't operate the flight, you can't make money, right? True. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go for the fourth question. If it's fourth, I can't remember. Um, how do you deal with jet lag? That's a question that many people have been asking me a lot. And my answer is always the same. I don't even know what jet lag is because we are always all over. So once we are somewhere and it's 3 a.m. and then two hours after we are somewhere else and it's 4 p.m. and then it's evening again and then it's lunchtime again and then you're like, what? <laughs> so your body doesn't get used to any specific time zone. So I don't really get jet lag. The only problem is like when you we land back in Dubai, which is our home, in the morning. That's terrible. And then you don't know what to do with yourself. If you should sleep, if you should keep strong and do something and try to sleep in the evening. So it's a bit tough. And let's say that I sleep and eat for the flights. Like if I know I have a flight in the evening, I need to sleep in the afternoon. So I'll start the day before to sleep in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. so the kind of, yeah. yeah. So I'm never in the same time zone. I'm always like all over. So I don't really get jet, jet lag. lag. You yeah. don't really feel it. No, because we are always like woo, all over the place. So we are not coming from a proper routine and then switch in one flight and then back to the routine. You're always like up and down. You're always so, missing the pattern. Exactly. So there's no pattern to break, basically. This link in the upper right corner is our masterclass series on joining Emirates. It's free and it's a gold mine. Trust us, follow it from the beginning to the very end. This question was asked by, uh, well, I added this question. <laughs> it was asked by me. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's how you deal with jet lag. I wanted to add a little thing, not too much, but I, I wanted to add this little thing of the fact that when you land in the morning, you really don't know what to do because you're extremely tired and you really want to sleep, but you know that if you sleep, you'll wake up in the evening and your day is over and then you'll have to stay awake during the night and it's really hard to fall asleep if you sleep like six hours. So what I recommend is to, if like imagine you land at 7 a.m., you go back home, you're at home around, I don't know, 9.30, 
You sleep three hours. You wake up, I don't know, like 12, and you have lunch, and you can still do a whole lot throughout your day. You work out, you meet your friends, you go, you do your chores, you pay bills, you wash your clothes, clean the house. I mean, you fill it up. You, f you fill the afternoon up with all kind of stuff that you needed to do that was postponed and postponed and postponed. And you'll get tired eventually and you'll just sleep and you'll sleep at night. So that's what I think that's the best recommendation I can offer you. Uh, let's uh, go ahead with the uh, fifth question. How tired are you on a layover and what are the effects, the symptoms that you feel on your body? Your eyes, are they dry? Your nose, is it dry? Uh, do you feel like the world is spinning around? Uh, do you fall asleep everywhere? What are the effects? Okay, for me, the last one. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I sat in a bus or in a train or something, yeah, I'm like switching off completely. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> yeah, big time. But then I downloaded some games on my phone, like, uh, I don't know, charades and all those things. So I try to play with the other people, with the crew that are coming with me on the layovers or something. So we keep each other awake. Because otherwise, it's just... like it's like torture. It's like torture. Just sleep, you know. I used to sleep on the train. My goodness. No, sometimes I do it, yeah. But most of the time, I try to keep myself awake. Otherwise, it's not nice. But like yesterday, for example, I went out with my crew, and on the way back, I couldn't hold it. You fell asleep in yeah, the, car. the two girls, me and another girl, so dead. <laughs> <laughs> but it's normal. Come on, what do you want? Yeah. Like imagine she she goes to New York one day and then the next day she's going to Sydney and then she goes for I don't know like so much stuff and it's normal for you to to fall asleep. You're tired. I, mean, I know, but the, you're like you go and you see the and you are in the city that you've never been before and you want to go and see things or you are in the city that you've been 25 million times. But there's one thing that you haven't seen, so you want to go there. So you push yourself because it's nice. That's the the good side of this job, the possibility to see the world. So you need to go. <laughs> you need to find the energy to discover and discover, or this job isn't worth it, I think, because just working for the money, that's not the way to do it. This is for traveling and discovering new cultures, new traditions, new places. If you don't do that, then I think you chose the wrong job. Yeah. You agree? New food. Yeah. And new food. <laughs> like, I, I, I never thought I would love Indian food that much because it's oh, yeah, so spicy too. and curry and, you know, farts are kind of smelly. But then, <laughs> but then once I had it, like, oh my God, I crave it. Paneer? Don't oh, get me started. Yeah. I love paneer. Me too. And the sweet thing, what is the one with the cream and the strawberries on top and the pistachios? Do you remember the sweet in, uh, I think it's uh, in the crew the cart. White bones? Uh, no, it's uh, like a, a pudding. It has a pudding. It's a yellow pudding, a cream. It's just so good. It's all Hello. buttery. So much butter. What are the, uh, you didn't answer this question, what are the effects on your body? Like your face, is it dry? How do you feel uh, from dehydrated? What's the feel like? You feel like it's all uh, scratchy, dry. How do you feel when you're tired? Okay, so I think the best description mm -hmm. is, you know the screensaver on the computer? <laughs> Those, the fishes or the balls that move around. So the laptop is on, but it's not doing anything. It's just going. That's the way we feel. <laughs> I mean, I feel. <laughs> That's your brain. Yeah, so I'm, I'm talking to you, but in my mind, there are the fishes moving or the balls is moving from one <laughs> side to the other. So I'm not always on completely, <laughs> but I want to go, so I'm pushing myself till when I cannot do anything else anymore, so then I crash. And you col you collapse in the hotel, in the bed, like you're dead. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definite. Wake me up tomorrow. <laughs> With the wake-up call. <laughs> is it true that Emirates is rejecting all foreigners coming to the open days in other countries? This was posted by Sayuru de Higas Pitiya. Sorry for the last name. Sayuru is one of our really good friends. Uh, he's the moderator of Emirates Wannabes, by the way. So, hi Sayuru. Say hi to Sayuru. Hey Sayuru. Ciao Sayu. <laughs> okay, so what can you answer to this question? To be honest, um, I don't think so. Like, I'm not sure, obviously, but I don't think so. Actually, my flight coming here, there was a girl that went somewhere else. They went abroad to do her open day. So... I guess it's okay. Actually, when I did mine in Venice, there was a girl from Greece 
So really fun. Yeah, definitely. She, passed, right? she wasn't she got accepted, you remember? Not really. <laughs> okay, but there are many. Like Yeah. For example, I joined with an American passport and I was in Rome and practically I should be in the US. But no, I was in Italy and I got accepted in Italy. I also went to the Netherlands and I got a good shot. The only thing is that I was coupled with a guy from Qatar Airways and and he was like very bossy. He was choosing everything and I was kind of a bit passive because I uh, didn't learn this. I was way younger and so uh, I could have passed but I didn't pass just for that reason but still you can apply and you will be accepted if you're good you will be accepted abroad so uh, I strongly recommend you keep on doing it but don't forget to watch that video with Petra because you have to have a strategy before you go to an open day abroad remember if your skin tone if your hair your eyes are not very similar to the skin tone of the people that they're looking for because there's a certain strategy that the company is using hiring in other countries if you don't respect those those uh, somatic tracts, those uh, those little characteristics, they're not going to hire you just based on the fact of that. So uh, it's, I'm really uh, recommending you to watch that video, have a strategy before going abroad, because it's eventually, if you don't pass, it's a ticket that you paid for, the hotel that you paid for, food. It's a lot of money. So. Have a strategy before you go abroad so you don't waste that money. That's my biggest recommendation. Even the numbers of people that are going to apply in the places are playing a big role. Because, like, yeah. for example, when I did it in Venice, we were like 300. Uh, my friend did it in uh, Bangkok, there were thousands. So, obviously, it's harder when the, where the number of people applying is a big number. Yeah. So even that, it's a good point. So maybe if you go to an open day and you see how many people is in your open day, you can switch information within each other. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's why I always encourage people to share their open day experience, talk to each other, make friends, do these small little groups, chat between each other, and find out which open day has very few candidates going for the open day so you can create your strategy around that open day, knowing that the percentage of possibilities of you joining the company there are much higher than in other places. I'll give you an example. I was in the Netherlands, it was 150 people. I went to, yeah, it was very few. And then I went to Rome and it was 1,000 people and there were even more people outside that weren't let in because they just couldn't fit, even standing. So way better to go to the Netherlands. I passed in Italy because Italians usually don't have a really good English. Sorry for that, don't beat me please. But it, it's me. true. <laughs> It's true, so I, me going to Rome with my good English, I kind of prevailed over other uh, applicants because they didn't have such a good English. So that was something that really worked for me. So I really recommend you find a place where they don't speak good English, but there are a few candidates applying. That's the best, really. Bam! I completely disagree with the Italian part. <laughs> Yes, but uh, you have to understand uh, that uh, this... Uh, okay, enough. Is there any hope for Emirates to recruit in countries where they don't hold open days now? For example, Africa, certain Asian countries, um, Philippines. Are they ever going to start recruiting there? Do you have any knowledge? No, right? They don't say these things. No, sorry, we don't know those things. So one reason, I'm going to say it again, but I've said it already in the past, uh, one reason why they don't hire in India, why they don't hire in the Philippines, why they don't hire in uh, Africa, is because we, we have a lot. There's, there's a lot of uh, people in the company that come from those countries and, uh, you know, you have to have a variety. How do you call Emirates? Cosmopolitan, right? So how good is the word cosmopolitan for Emirates if they only have two or three nationalities? They need to have a broad amount of nationalities. And the people that really like the money that Emirates gives you, and because uh, Europeans and Americans and Canadians and these, these people, um, they're used to have really high salaries. So if, if, you, if you give them worse conditions and if you don't pay them that well, they're just going to leave. And so I don't want to say that a lot of people resign coming from these countries, but it's more likely that they are the ones to resign and the people that make much more money than the money that they make in their country will stay. And so given the fact of what I just said, uh, you'll find a lot of Filipinos, Indians, uh, Bangladeshis, Pakistanis, um, Africans in the company because they really want to stay. It's really good money for them. I totally understand them and it is good money. So uh, that's one of the reasons why they're not hiring at the moment in Africa and India and these places. But I'm very sure that if 
people start resigning or they start becoming of an age and they can't work for Emirates anymore and they resign, then they will start hiring again in India and Africa and all these places. So because they have to, again, as I said, substitute. They need to fill in the gaps of those people that are missing. And uh, African people, they have to be substituted by African people. Uh, there's no other people that can be as African as Africans, right? So, um, yeah, but... Uh, we don't really know, we're speculating. If I were to tell you that they're going to open next year, it wouldn't be true because yeah. they might not. We, we really don't know and this is only based on the market research that Emirates does and the need. So you just have to wait, check the website, there's a link in the description, keep on checking every month and uh, hopefully if it opens uh, you can join and go. For now all I can recommend is you go to an open day abroad following the strategies from the video that I did of the open day uh, with Petra and uh, hopefully you won't waste that money. You will go to the open day and be successful and you'll be part of Emirates. Okay, practically you're interviewing me because I'm talking so much. <laughs> oh my God. My arm is dying. <laughs> I think we've reached the very end of our uh, questions and answers uh, with Alice. It was a really huge, huge, big pleasure having you here, not only because we got to go around and walk around, yeah. and uh, I love spending my time with you, but also for answering these questions. Like, really, well, I think we spent two hours doing these questions and answers yesterday, and then the video failed because the uh, it stopped recording for some reason, I don't know. Like, Yeah, so uh, we uh, redid it now, and so it's another hour of time. And so I really want to thank you so much for being so kind and answering all the questions. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. If you like this content, hit the like button. It really helps us because if you like it, it will be shown to other people and we'll grow and we'll have uh, more money to create these videos for you. If you're interested in more content, you can look at the description. There's several links of our content, other videos, other stuff. We do travel guides too. If you're interested, check them out. For now, that's it. See you next time. Ciao. Ciao. We're trying to reach 10,000 subscribers and only your help can make the difference. Subscribe, comment, like, and share if you care supporting us. Feel free to take a look at our popular low-cost travel guides here. Check our entire free Emirates Masterclass course here. We'd love to know your experience in the comments below. If you have any other questions, just ask and I will reply. As always, it's my pleasure to do videos. Hope you liked it and keep it rolling guys.